Let's see, I'm frozen. No, I'm not frozen. Happy Tuesday, besties and bosses. How are you doing? Happy spring. Happy all the fun things. I'm so excited to chat with you today. I also have to tell you, my husband and I, before this live, walked down to one of our favorite coffee shops and got a nitro cold brew. Has anyone had a nitro cold brew? So I have just ingested a nitro cold brew, which I guess is stronger. I thought it was delicious, but there's a very good chance that I will be talking extra fast today and you will know why. So today's live stream is brought to you by nitro cold through. But jokes and caffeination excitement aside, I'm super, super jazzed to see you to dive into our conversation today. And today's going to be a fun one. We are celebrating seven years in business. See, seven years in business, at least eight years coaching, because I took a year long coach training, probably nine years coaching before I ever started my business. And quite literally, decades at this point in marketing and sales, whether that was learning that through my acting days or waiting tables or working in advertising before starting this business. But seven years officially from when I opened the doors of my business and started charging for coaching was on March 1st. And I wanted to have a celebration with all of you because I do think it's a big deal to be in business for seven years. And what I'm particularly celebrating is not only being in business for seven years, but running a profitable, sustainable business on my terms. We make multi great multi six figures with a great profit margin from one on one alone. We've crossed over a million revenue in just under four years, 700K in two years. And we have a scalable one on one model. We do so with, again, a great profit margin with, there's nothing wrong with ads without spending a dime on ads and really, the thing that's most important to me is doing things my way because this is the way I want to run and scale my business and I've very intentionally done so. So I am celebrating the crap out of that and I thought it would be fun to have a live stream to dig into some of the lessons I've learned along the way over the last seven years, as long as, as long as, as well as some of the things I've unlearned over the last seven years, there have definitely been some really important lessons I've unlearned. And that's something I support clients with quite a bit. A lot of times I find most of us know way more than we give ourselves credit for when it comes to a business, when it comes to ourselves. And a lot of what I'm supporting clients with is helping them trust themselves and take their power back in their business. It's such a key part of being a CEO and creating success. And a lot of times it is unlearning the noise we've taken on. And that's definitely been a part of my journey. So I'm going to dive into that today as well. So hopefully this will be valuable for you. I spent some time and took some notes. My husband and I were chatting over our nitro, nitro, nitro cold brew about this. And there is so much I could share with you. I, I think there's countless more lessons, but I tried to boil this down to some of the more recent ones. And some of these I've shared over the years, but some that have been more recent for me this year in business that are feeling more, more present. And then I also want to share with you my projection for moving forward in business, what I'm focused on and what I'm really excited about that is giving me life in business right now. And we'll share that at the end. So before I dive into all of the things, if you're here now on the replay, say hi, we are doing a giveaway and I'm giving, I thought this would be fun. So one of the first programs I made in my business was called Get Unstuck, Unlock Your Success. It goes through five of the most common mindset blocks I see come up for creatives, entrepreneurs, business owners, and it also gives you some tools to help you shift those mindset blocks. It is an oldie, but a goodie. People are still getting value from it, but I thought since we're doing the, the anniversary celebration lesson, that would be a really fun one to give away to someone. So if you are live, anytime during the live today, just drop me an emoji. We're going to give this away to someone who comments live. Sometimes we do it for anyone who comments, but someone who is live, which means if there aren't a lot of people live, you've got a really great chance of winning. And otherwise we'll, we'll do another giveaway next Tuesday, but that is our giveaway today. All right, so all of the things I want to dig into. One of the things I wanted to preface with, and as I'm going through this, I'm obviously sharing this with you because I hope this is super valuable for you. I hope as we go through this, some of these things are lessons I wish and not in a way of I'm making myself wrong, but just things that I think would have been helpful for me to have known earlier on in business and that I think would have been great if someone would have shared with me. So I hope I hope some of these will land for you in that way, but I do want this to be valuable for you. So if you have a question, if you want clarity around anything, please let me know because that's, that's why I'm sharing this. And one of the things that I wanted to preface this with that feels important to acknowledge is 
trying to think of how I want to phrase this. I think I put this in the email that I sent out around this. I really think who I am in business today is not who I was in business seven years ago. I think in many ways I've learned a lot and I've become more of myself and of course I'm still myself. But I also think so much of growing a business and growing as a human and creating success and continuing to up level does mean that we continue to work through edges. We continue to expand and we continue to redefine ourselves, not in a way of like we weren't authentic before or anything like that. I think in some ways we peel off the layers and we become that much more authentic and true to who we are. But I do think there is also an element of we really do have to step into new layers and levels of ourselves. I was talking with a friend yesterday on Instagram, my friend Elise, and we were just talking about dirty six figure secrets on an industry chat on Instagram, which I can link to. But one of she just went to a Joe Dispenza retreat and we were just talking about some of Joe Dispenza's work and so much of what he talks about is really overcoming yourself and overcoming who you think you are and so much of the work I did as an actress and that I do now in business is continuing to define my role and step into that and become that version of myself and up level along with it over and over again. And I share that because I think who I am today in business is not who I was five years ago. And I also think five years from now, I'll look back at this and be like, oh, wow, I'm not the same person I am five years in the future than I am from today. And I I say that because I think those sorts of identity shifts can feel really uncomfortable. And I think that's one of the first lessons I had to learn that that is part of being a CEO and part of growth. And identity shifts are, we do really have to be it before we have it. And identity shifts and becoming a new level or overcoming yourself to become that next level can also be wildly uncomfortable for for multitude of reasons for one what i have found and watching now on the replay you'll have to let me know if you've experienced this as well and i'm going to do a master class i think in may around this talking talking about this a lot more into some of my process and how i coach clients around this but that identity piece is i think such a core pillar of what creates success on any level and something i have focused on every year at every level and again this is also the, like literally the work i did when i was acting you have to step into that role and become become that role and become that character but it's the same thing we do in business and what I find can be very uncomfortable is when we're shifting past our current level of self, when we are changing our identity, when we're playing a new role, so to say that feels bigger than who we currently are, it is outside our comfort zone. It is going to feel untethered, even if it is the most grounded and closer to who you really are thing, because we are wired for survival we are wired for what feels familiar and so this is going to not feel familiar to you and the thing that's really fascinating with identity and why i talk so much about a ceo identity or a ceo role if i'm using more of the acting analogy is your identity is what encompasses your mindset it is it's what sets the parameters for your reality the results you will allow yourself to have or not have but it's also how you teach other people to think about you and to respond and act to you if i have an identity for example um, or if i had a ceo role if we, if we think um, even an acting role right if i was playing an acting role of someone who was um super I don't love the word lazy. Actually, I don't think people are lazy, but someone who was super, someone who was, this is an easier one. If I was playing an acting role of someone who was a bitch and was just really mean and conniving and manipulative, and that was the role I was living into, not only is that how I would see myself and not only is how I see myself, what would set up my perspective and my parameter and boundaries in my world and what I would allow and not allow in terms of my reality to come in. But that is also what would teach other people how to treat me, how to respond to me how to act to me so if i'm always if i'm always a bitch so to say other people know me that way they're going to respond to my identity and like so if i suddenly shift things and suddenly i go from being manipulative and bitchy and cold-hearted and suddenly i'm just like this super bleeding heart kind-hearted person right that's going to be not only jarring to me because it's such a contrast from what i'm used to but it's going to be jarring to the people around me it's going to take a second for them and everything to shift to catch up hopefully that example makes sense and i i bring that over to business because i think that's been one of the biggest lessons for me in business to see that that is what we are doing at every stage and normalizing that 
it is uncomfortable as fuck when you're changing, when you're up leveling, when you're stretching your identity for all of these reasons, right? If I've been a bitch my whole life and that's what I've treat, taught people to see me as, it's also what I, how I know how to be and survive in this world. If I'm suddenly adapting and shifting that, it's going to feel very deregulated. And like it's going to feel super funky, but I'm also going to have reflected back to me until that is integrated from people where they're, where they're like, yeah, even though this is super nice, like who the fuck are you being right now? So I reflect that here because I think that's just one of the first pieces here. I know who I am today is on who I'm going to be in five years from now. And that has been one of the biggest, I would say, things I've both had to learn and unlearn at every stage in business. And just to make friends with the normalcy of that, that that isn't being fake or inauthentic. I think, again, if anything, it's more authentic to who we really are and that it is, it can be wildly uncomfortable and that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. And it can make other people wildly uncomfortable and that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Um, Marie says, Marie here, happy anniversary. Thank you. Happy. Um, I was gonna say happy anniversary to you. So nice to see you here. You've 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 been you've been on this journey with me for for a good couple of years. So I hope that identity piece makes sense. Again, I'm gonna do a whole masterclass and training on this and go far more into depth than some of the practices and tools I use about around this. But I, I do think that is one of the the things I want to start with into something that I've just really seen to be true and was also coming up on a conversation yesterday. Okay. Next one here, I'm going to go through some, I, I think this this one here you've probably heard me talk about, and then I'm going to go into some nuances around, because uh, I want to go into the clarity, mindset, strategy, and action pieces, what I've lessons learned, lessons not learned, and then I have some, um, some more of my per personal growth edges that I'm going to share with you as well. So in terms of clarity in business, you have definitely heard me share this before, but I want to share a nuance around that. And that is, I really and truly believe seven years into business, and not just seven years into business, but in business making I make reoccurring multi-five figure months. It's not like we make money here or there. We've been sustainable making that kind of money for four and a half, five years now for, for, a, for a hot second. And what I really see to be true from my business and also supporting clients to many of my clients make far more money than me because of my business model and just seeing my clients who are making really great money and sustaining that year over year because many of my clients have worked with me for three years four years five years right when i see my clients who are sustaining half a million 800k a year what i see to be congruent across the board for all of us is really understanding that how you make your money matters as much as the money you are making i talk so much about your version of success and doing things your way and this is really what i'm talking about it's really tough to sustain making great money year over year over year if you are out of alignment if you are out of congruence if you're out of integrity if you kind of hate what you fucking do if you don't like your business model if you right if if it i think in one of the emails i sent recently i was talking about happy money which is a term from ken honda he wrote a book around this but if if the way you're making your money doesn't feel happy and you feel like it just feels misaligned in some way that that is tough to sustain year after year month after month year after year and here's the caveat that i think is really important to understand and something i was thinking about over my business journey i'm saying this seven years into business and part of the reason it's so easy for me to be so locked and loaded on my business model and so clear about the way I want to make money and so clear on the trade-offs I am and I'm not willing to make and so clear on where I'm willing to say no to make money because I say no to lots of money-making opportunities because the more success you have, just the more opportunities you have to make money. It's just the way it is. And I know that past me would have found that to be annoying, but it is true. But what the reason this can be true today is when i started my business i didn't know what my version of success was i didn't know i didn't have clarity on the business model i wanted i didn't have clarity on my niche i started my business as a general life coach as a general mindset coach i thought maybe i wanted to do money mindset coaching maybe relationship coaching business coaching wasn't even on my radar i literally tested and i know i've shared this before but i think it's just helpful for someone to hear because it's so easy to compare our year one or year three to someone year seven or ten and i i want to be so mindful i'm sharing this from year seven and again this is year eight or nine in coaching and decades into some of the things that go into this but year one and two in business i thought maybe i did want to have 
a course model. That's why I'm my giveaway today is a course to you that I a course for you that I created in year one or two. It that is a this is an, an oldie but a goodie, right? I, I tested a membership model and sold a membership model. It was called the Grit Lab. Some people might remember that. It was very fun. I just learned that that wasn't that wasn't actually what I in terms of my highest way to deliver service. I have run a group program. Some of you might remember the foundation. I ran a mastermind. Gosh, my first year in business, I ran a mastermind. And then last year, I ran a mastermind as well, a behind the scenes private mastermind for ongoing clients. I have, I've tried every business model. I also, again, tried one niche and didn't discover business coaching as my niche until probably a year or two in when I realized I was helping, I literally helped a client scale to a million dollars with her business and realized, wait a second, I'm helping someone do this. I'm really good at this. I'm attracting a lot of clients in this space. I didn't come in with no business experience coaching in that in that niche. So I'm sharing this because yes, how you make your money matters. Alignment matters. Congruency matters. Integrity matters. Everything I'm saying here is true. And that's what I see true for my clients as well. And clarity comes from action. The clarity in my business I have today, the clarity I see in my clients' business is also sometimes from not knowing and taking the best educated guess you can and having a hypothesis and being willing to decide on something, go all in, commit, run full at it, and to collect data as quickly as possible, and also to make changes as quickly as possible if you find something isn't what you thought it would be. So I know sometimes that can be annoying to hear, but hopefully it's also permission giving to someone. I, I actually had a call with someone this morning about this and I invited her to pause waiting before she hires me because of where she's at in in the clarity part of her journey because I, I do think that sometimes we doesn't matter how much you could coach someone right um, sometimes we just have to go out and take some action to get some clarity and data in and to have that give us some information in business so that has been uh, I would say a huge lesson for me and something I've just been seen to be true over and over again and also a gift I've been willing to give myself is knowing that yes I get to choose how I make my money I get to do things on my terms but sometimes you don't know what that means until you try some things out and you're like oh it's kind of like dating sometimes you don't know who the right person is for you until you have some dates you're like that was a great human but so not my person right sometimes you have to go on a couple dates I have a husband in the other room who's still my person and the best husband ever and one of the reasons that I think we're able to like know that is we both dated and had dates with other people who were great humans but weren't weren't right for us so Again, I hope that is permission giving and I hope that dichotomy there makes sense in terms of, yes, absolutely the way you make your money matters. Absolutely, you get to do things on your terms. Absolutely, your version of success. Absolutely to all of that. And if you don't know what that is, permission to not know and to find it out by trying something, by taking a stab at what you think it might be and permission to change your mind and to pivot or to adapt and to know that's so normal in business. Most businesses, in fact, if you look at a lot of successful businesses, they're either I shared this in some posts recently either their messaging and branding has evolved dramatically from when they started their business if nothing else to evolve with the market and to evolve with time and many businesses of evolve again to keep up with what's going on technology things like that but also many businesses and brands that we know that are really successful started out as one thing and then learned through through click basically took action, tested things, got data, and then refined. And what we know them as today is not what, what they started out as. So I, I hope that that can be permission giving for everyone. I know it's not as fun as like knowing the answer right when you start your business, but I have found seven years later, that's definitely part of the journey for most people. And for the people I know who don't have that journey of having to find some, take some action to get some clarity in their business first, it's often because they've had another business beforehand or had another they've had something beforehand that's helped to give them some of that clarity wow i've got a lot i want to go through here so i'm going to go through um i'm just going to run through my list but again if you have questions reflections anything throw them at me i love to hear those and i want to make sure this is valuable for you okay so let's talk the strategy piece here a little bit so what this is definitely a what i've learned and unlearned over the past seven years in business 
What is really fascinating to me when I look at my business strategy, so I've definitely shared this before, but the strategy I use today is not that dissimilar than what I used my first year in business. While my income is dramatically different and the like level of success is dramatically different, there's a couple reasons for that. But I think what is, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've shared this, but if not, I'm going to I, this this will be new information for everyone. I'm, I'm, this might be a repeat for some people to hear, and hopefully it's very valuable. I came into the online space and did understand business. Did I, I come? I came from areas where, I mean, acting. You are running a small business, and you are literally marketing and selling your talent. I knew what to do, and I came in and right out of the gate started creating content. Started leveraging Facebook groups. Started leveraging. I didn't have a Facebook. I didn't have my Facebook group. I think until that three or four years into business, I was on Instagram and leveraging other Facebook groups doing free trainings, right? All of the things I'm doing today. I booked my first paying client, I think within a couple weeks into business by literally some of the things I do today. I was leveraging other Facebook groups, offering value, offered free calls, right? I, everything I was doing was working. I started building some traction right at the start of my business and literally the same strategies we're using today, except the difference between seven years ago, Kim, and today, Kim, is I didn't trust myself and I came into the online space really with a hang up thinking I had never had a real job before. I had spent 10 years in the entertainment world and then working as an agent in the advertising world, which is very much a real job. But I, for whatever reason, thought it was a fluffy job because I, I don't know, because I didn't have an MBA and because I didn't have to wear a suit to work. I don't know what, what it's very funny. I just like had these stories, right? And so I was discounting what I knew. And I thought when I came into the space, even though I was booking clients and making money right out the gate, that there must be something I don't know and that other people must know better than me. So I started with the strategy. I have always been consistent as fuck. I've shown up, I think, pretty much every day for seven years with content, maybe a day or two here if I was sick or something like that. But pretty much every day, if not more than more than once a day. But I didn't trust myself. And so I, a couple months in, I started signing up for lots of programs that started teaching me and telling me all the things I was supposed to do and all the things I was doing wrong. And none of these problems, uh, programs were necessarily wrong or bad. I just didn't trust myself and was giving my power away. And instead of sticking with what was working in my business, because I didn't trust myself and because I was giving my power away to other programs that I'm sure were perfectly great programs. They just weren't what I needed in my business or they weren't the right thing for me to address in my business. What I probably needed at that time was mindset support. I did a lot of not seeing my strategy all the way through and was on Pinterest at one point and trying to learn Facebook ads. I was just doing this thing I see a lot in clients now and I see a lot in our space, which is just not letting something have enough time to really build traction to give you the results you want. And so that was one of the biggest lessons I learned. And as soon as I, and it, it took me a second to learn this. And I think what was sneaky about this is because I, I am good at getting into action. I, I am good at marketing and sales. So I would, whatever I tried, I would see results from. I just never let any of those strategies um, play full out enough that I would basically limit cap um, how much success I would have from them. And it wasn't until I invested in higher level one-on-one -on -one coaching support because I was in, I've always invested in coaching support. I've had great coaches, but I was kind of doing that thing where you jump around and then, and then I was in a mastermind and then I was in a course and like I was, I've always invested in my business, but I was just getting all of this information and all of these different things to try. And it wasn't until I had one person, the same coach I'm working with today, um, basically like, like, let's just pick one of these things and go all in that I really saw my business blow up. So I share this here because really what I had to do was unlearn all of the really smart strategies I had learned. I had to unlearn all of the really great insights I was getting from people that just weren't right for me. I had to unlearn so much of the great information that I had like diligently gotten like the best student ever, right? I had to unlearn so much of that and really come back to basically what I knew when I started my business. And so much of that was more about trusting myself. And I, I would say that is probably one of the biggest both lessons I've learned and unlearned that if you've heard me share this again, I will probably keep sharing this because it's also one of the biggest things that I I see in clients and I see in our space. I have a live stream in a couple of weeks coming up where I want to dig into this a lot more because I think it's actually, um, I don't like to call it like problems, but I, I think we're it's just becoming 
an even larger prevalent problem in our online space. And I think it's, it's, we'll save it for the future, future live stream. But for, for today's conversation, I would say that is definitely one of the biggest lessons. And with that, the, the lesson, like the thing under the thing there was really learning to trust that I did know enough and to trust that I'm, I actually know what the F I'm doing and to, to let something play out long enough and really to take my power back, I think is probably a better way to say that and not to give it away to, not to assume other people know more about me and my business than I do. And with that, and I think this is the uh, the caveat that I think can be a little confusing. And with that, to still be very open-minded to seeing, and I don't fucking know everything, no matter what we're doing in business, and something I'll share more about at the end, but I feel like I'm just getting started in business. I think I'm really good at what I do. I think I had great instincts when I started my business and a great strategy. I think I'm excellent at marketing and sales, and I am still two days, seven years later. I'm I'm still and I've been in marketing and sales in some way for literally. I don't know, what is that, two decades, if not more at this point, I'm still learning new things every single day about my business, about marketing, about selling, about how my mindset plays into that. There are always nuances. There are always opportunities for refinement I'm so in so many different ways. And so I think there's a little bit of a yes and with, with this lesson of both unlearning the really the noise from giving my power away and and learning to trust my own instincts more but also with that being so willing and open to also knowing I don't know everything and there's so much to learn and just learning it from within my own self and within my own business as opposed to what everybody else says and I think maybe that's that's the big big difference there Um, so hopefully hopefully that nuance makes sense and again, questions, reflections, throw them at me. The other piece on the, oh, I have a note here. Um, let shit work is my very, uh, very, um, what's it called? Poetic, poetic note that I made here. So the poetic note is allow shit to work. Give stuff enough, give stuff a chance to work. I think that has been one of the biggest, biggest lessons in business is seeing how as someone who is a high achiever, and I'm sure most of the people here are as well, and generally if you're high achieving and if you're driven, and if you're good at what you do, we I, I tease some of my clients that this is the curse of, of, of them being a gifted, brilliant person. Oftentimes this means things come easily to you. This means you're pretty good at like, if I do a thing, I get a result. And, and that's such a great quality but every quality has a shadow side. And I think one of the shadow sides to this can be that we're just so used to having results come pretty quickly. So then when you come into business and it just takes time for a strategy to play out, it just takes time to build an audience. It just takes time to have people build the know, like, and trust, right? I mean, minimum, if you're great at what you do and your messaging is on point and your strategy is on point and you're consistent as fuck and it's not a weird, funky economy and all of the things, right? Usually we'd say a strategy takes a minimum of 90 days to play out. Which I've very much seen to be true. I usually can see whatever is happening in my business today is a reflection of two things. One, my strategy and the action I was taking 90 days ago or 180 days ago and the identity piece we just talked about, my identity and who I was thinking, how I was being 90 days ago or 100 days ago, right? There's always a time lag. And I think that is just something I've had to relearn over and over again because I can be a little bit like, come on, stuff should just be happening. And I think this can happen for for my clients as well. So I want to normalize that, but also this is stuff, you know, this is the stuff Kim seven years ago would have loved to have someone say, like, hey, this is normal and this is something just to be just to be mindful of. And I would say those are the two the two levers there. Really, if you look today at your results, I think so often we want to look at today's result and, and base them on what's been going on in the past week. And I would invite you instead more to look at today's result as both your mindset and energy and your strategy and action from 90 to 100 days ago, because that usually is kind of kind of the time lag. And then seeing those are the levers to play with if you want different results showing up in the future for you. And that is the other piece I have really found to be true with the strategy lever. I'm sure you've heard me say this a million times, but it's not just the the strategy piece, but it's the energy and the mindset in which you take that strategy that I have seen make all the difference. Um, okay. 
I have a lot here, so I'm gonna go through go through the next ones. But again, if you have questions, throw throw them at me. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going through these because I do I do have a lot, and I hope these are helpful. So my my kind of this was my little uh, letter B to this is I was speaking to how I've always been consistent as fuck, and that has definitely been something I've seen really work in my favor as a business owner. And I, I preach this a lot to clients. Con- consistency really does matter in business. And on, on all the levels, we could have four live streams just around consistency. And I think most people really aren't, if they're not getting the results they want, oftentimes there is a consistency factor there, there whether it's being consistent, consistent with their mindset and energy or with how they're showing up or consistent with their messaging. I think there's a lot of ways in which consistency again, like mindset, messaging, your actual action, your actual strategy. And consistency does not mean don't refine. Consistency does not mean don't ever improve. Consistency does not mean you don't have seasons in business. Consistency does not mean do the same exact thing all the time. And so I would say I one of the things that has probably served me exponentially in business is the willingness to be so consistent and to be consistent before results have shown up. I'm not an overnight success, right? I was consistent and showed up every day for what was that two years, two and a half for, for a while before I had my first six figure a year and worked a part time job that whole time, right? I was be really willing to be consistent before the money came through the door at like a higher level to support my business and go full time. I don't think I'm a full time in business. I'm trying to think. I must, I must, yeah, it must have been two and a half. Anyway, it doesn't even matter. Um, two and a half, three years into business. But I, I definitely was not full. I definitely didn't like do that thing where I quit my job and just started this business. I've always, when I started my business, I still had a job in the advertising world, working as an agent, as a rep, representing directors to support myself because I live in New York City and I wanted to be able to invest in coaching and invest in my business and not put pressure on my business. And I had that until I was very sustainable before before I left that job. And I also loved that job. That was a great job. Um, but I think with that scene that um, consistency is about showing up consistently before the results because i think a lot of times we think consistency is the thing you do after you have the results and i I know this is so captain obvious but consistency is the thing you do to create the result and then what you keep doing after the result but also understanding consistency has seasons and there is refinement and change it does not literally do the same same exact thing i'm I'm consistent, but we've had, that has looked different ways um, within that consistency. So hopefully that part makes sense, but I will, I will preach consistency forever. Also, if I say that word one more time, it's going to sound funny. Another piece on the strategy side that I wanted to speak to that I don't think Kim my first year in business really understood how important this was. I think I had an instinct on this, but I think when I started my business, I was still acting at that time. I I stopped acting when I started my business, but I just left the acting world. And looking back on the acting world, I can see how not true this is in the acting world, but I definitely had a belief set at the time that if I just honed my craft enough, and if I was just a brilliant enough actor, actress that is what would create success and i i've had people tell me how talented i i was and booked work right and and what i've now seen looking back on that time is talent is a prerequisite it is absolutely a part of what created creates success in the acting world but it's also a combination of that and how you treat your acting work as a small business and how you learn how to market and sell and the opportunities you get. And there's a lot of other factors. And when and the reason I'm sharing that is when I started this business, I do think I really thought if the the key to success is being the best coach in the world, basically. And I do think it is a prerequisite if I am charging money for coaching that I need to be a damn good coach and put my money where my mouth is. Absolutely. I think if we are in business and we're putting a price tag next to something, the prerequisite, like the baseline is that there is a quality product or service behind that, right? If I'm going to go out and audition for an acting role, kind of like the baseline requirement is that if you're having an audition, it's assumed that you know how to act. Um, And what I think I didn't realize and that I know so much more now is that is a prerequisite. And of course, the more you do something, the more experience you have, the more you hone your craft, right? Seven years in, I am 
that much better of a coach because I've just been on thousands and thousands and thousands of calls at this point and because I I only offer one-on-one so I'm on one-on-one calls literally multiple multiple calls every single day with business owners and have been for seven years so of course I'm going to hone my my craft and my skill and when it comes to business and when it comes to making money that's simply a prerequisite that is not actually what is like the whole thing the other piece of the pie and and the reason i say this is when i think about acting there are plenty of people who are talented and who are who keep honing their craft but who never get paid as actors and there are plenty of people who are okay actors who make a lot of money and i think starting to see like those two are not necessarily what create success and money and the same is true in business there are a lot of people who are so 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 good at what they do but they're not great at running a business and they're not great at knowing how to monetize that and there are lots of people who are like so so at what they and i'm not hating but just who like maybe aren't as skilled as some people who are even more skilled who are making a gazillion dollars and then unfortunately there are people who probably are smoke and mirrors who are making a gazillion dollars and I think what I've really learned over the years is starting to hold these two two elements as separate and seeing yes there is a prerequisite that you are who you say you are you know what you're doing you care about your craft you're good at what you do if you're putting a price tag next to it right that's just a prerequisite if we're charging money for something and we're coming from a place of integrity and when it comes to business that like lives on its own then everything else is really all about marketing and sales and your business model and your pricing and if you want a business that pays you money these are the pieces that are necessary to focus on to treat your business like a business and if you want to make more money these are the levers to press and of course continue to refine your skills i'm i i hone my skills every day i'm not saying don't but i think what can happen so often one of the things i've had to learn and something i support clients with a lot is as people who care a lot about our work and as people who care a lot about integrity and oftentimes as people who are high performers we can get so focused on the craft side of things right we want another degree we want another certificate we start to have this narrative and belief of if i just get better then my business will have more success then i will make more money if i can just get even better at my skill set if i can prove at how good i am that's what makes me more money and people who make more money they must be ten thousand times better than me or no more than me and it starts to create this pedestal situation as opposed to actually the the two just are, are they're just two separate buckets you can be the best in the world at something and not make all that much money if you don't have a business model that's charging enough or that is scalable right or if you're not marketing in a way that puts you in front of people or if you don't know how to sell and so that has been i would say one of the biggest edges for me to like have to work and and also then just seeing how both really are important and holding the importance of marketing and sales and treating your business like a business and being clear about what trade-offs are true with different business models and different pricing and that if i want to make more money really it's more about my business model and what am i charging at this point than it is how good or not i am at what i do because that's just the prerequisite like i'm good at what i do um and I hope this is a landing for people and I hope this is something that's valuable because I that has been both something I've really had to unwind over the like do a lot of mindset work around quite honestly because I have very intentionally chosen to scale a one-on-one model which is not necessarily the quickest path and way we've had other live streams around that where I've talked where I've talked about that but that's that's just definitely been something I've had to sit with when I'm in masterminds and in spaces with people who have different models than me and I think we are equally skilled at our crafts but because of different models the the speed at which maybe we're scaling our income is different and really allowing myself to see that's okay but those are the those are just the trade-offs and choices and have more to do with business model pricing right if i wanted to double my revenue i could just raise my rates tomorrow that would probably be the quickest path to do it that wouldn't necessarily mean i double my skill set overnight but it would double my revenue um so i hope that that resonates that has definitely been both something for me to learn and unlearn and probably one of my biggest personal edges to kind of work around and just really being able to continue to keep those things separate and to make them both important, but to let them live where they need to live within within my business and within my brain as well. And then with that, what I I would say just for anyone, depending on what stage you're at in business, I, I think just also remembering then that means that 
Mark, if, if you are a business for profit and having sustainability in your business and profitability in your business is important to you, and it is okay if that's not important to you. There are absolutely people who want to do things more for the craft side of things, but we'll use the acting example. If you want to be an actor who's making money and getting paid for that, the craft is, again, it is important, but then seeing the marketing and sales side, seeing the business model you have, seeing the pricing side, seeing the strategy and action side of things as really so important something to focus on just as much as the craft side of things because that is what actually drives the profitability and the sustainability assuming you are who you say you know you're good at what you do which i'm assuming if you're listening to this you are just seeing if there was anything there um my big note was is, is just just remember that marketing and sales like that that is just part of what business is and like so many people that come and work with me I think really feel a lot of resistance towards that and think that maybe it's pushy or not nice. And I want to offer it's simply business. There is not a business outside of our online space. If we look at some of the top companies in the world that are not heavily focused on strategy, their business model, their pricing, their marketing, their sales, their, their leadership, their messaging, right? These are just fundamental parts of business. And there is not a I can't think of any large business outside of our online space that is not only focused on that and taking action on that every day, but that is continually investing time and energy and resources into refining all of those those processes and continuing to take action on that. So I think just starting to normalize, that's just simply business and what's required in business. And that can also be very freeing, hopefully. Okay. Let's go to the next one because I've already been talking 45 minutes and I we might have to make this a two-parter. I didn't realize how much I had to say here. You'll have to let me know if this is valuable and if you want a two-parter. We'll see how much we can get through here. So the next one I have here, I can be quick on this one because we have done a live stream on this, but it is something that I think has really served me well in a business. And I think this can sound a little counterintuitive, so I will explain, but it's really learning to trust my business before, again, before I was fully booked, before I was making the money I am today to say no to opportunities to make money, to leave money on the table and to say no to clients who aren't aligned or aren't the right fit. And I say that because I think this is one of the toughest things for our business owners. And I think this is one of the toughest things I see, especially when you're in that place where it's like, but I want to make that first 10K month, or I want to get fully booked, or I've got rent to pay next week, right? When we have financial needs, I think I did a bite-sized business lesson on this recently, and I could talk about this at nauseum. I think we have done a live stream on this, so I, I, I am not discounting the need for being able to pay your bills or for the very real realities of money. And again, I, I realized I had a job when I started my business, all of these factors. And what I really believe to be true is that when we're in business, the money we make in our business, yes, it pays us. Yes, that's we want to make great money. Yes, we benefit that we get to make money from our business and it pays our salary. And our businesses don't exist to take care of our personal needs. My coach has really helped me see like our personal needs are separate than our business needs. My business exists if I'm charging money for a service to serve a human, you know, for whatever they're paying for. Like that's actually what the function of a business is. Coca-Cola, I don't know why I always use Coca-Cola as an example. I don't I don't drink Coca-Cola. We'll use my the coffee place. I just have my nitro coffee from Devotion Coffee down the street, right? When I go to buy my nitro coffee, I'm going there. That that's based to fill my caffeine addiction needs. And that is that is why that business exists. That business does not exist so that I can go and buy, give them money because they want to go buy a yacht next week or because they need to cover their overhead. Of course, that is a part of of the reality for them and they keep expanding their coffee company because as humans running that they want to make more money but that business functions to serve me as the person who is a consumer who is a client who is a customer and to really meet i pay money to meet my caffeine needs uh, such a funny example but i think we forget that sometimes in business and things can get really wackadoo and one of the the biggest gifts that i have had in business is a making sure i had if i was feeling scarce with money personally to find other avenues to make money when I started my business so that I didn't bring that into my business so that I really could say no to money making opportunities. I got a lot of really great money opportunity, not a lot, but a handful of really great money making opportunities when I was building my business that were really misaligned. 
someone offered me a job to be a copywriter on their team that would pay $10,000 a month. And at the time, I don't think I was even making $5,000 a month in my business. I, I would venture I was probably making like $3,000, if that, a month in my business living in New York City where, I mean, that barely covers, I don't even know if that covered my rent at the time. Um, so opportunities that really would have been like, oh yes, I should jump on this. But really looking at, I don't want to just, I had to be so willing to say no to that money so that I could say yes to this business and similarly really being mindful of of course you can't always know in advance what client relationships are going to be like but I've lovingly I'm sure I've shared this in so many different ways had so many people when I was building my business and not fully booked and not making money or or when I wanted to scale my revenue, whatever, or when we've had spots open that are wonderful, amazing humans, but not the right fit in terms of the work I'm best able to support them with. And I've just found it to be such a gift to my business long-term to be willing to say no to clients who are great humans, who I could definitely help, but not I'm just really not the best fit for them in terms of what they really need. I can just like sort of like wedge myself into that role. I literally had a call today with someone who's actually a past client who I adore, who wanted to see if it was the right fit for her to hire me again. And I told her I might be in six months, but for what she was specifically looking for, that I didn't feel good offering her coaching. And I, I, I know she's a great fit as a client. And so I'm reflecting this here because I think this is something we just don't talk about in this space a lot. We talk a lot about how do you market? How do you sell? How do you overcome objections? How do you make as much money as humanly possible and make a million dollars in a minute, which is great. And how do you have the lifestyle and how do you have the freedom and how do you have like, I don't know, the trips and the purses and the things, which I'm all for. I I love some luxury. I love some nice shit. I live in a beautiful apartment. I love bougie things as much as the next person. And I think we sometimes forget to also talk about the reality of what a business is actually meant to do as in terms of what the functionality, what the role of our business is. And something I'm grateful to ask him for that is, I don't know if this is necessarily, um, this is just something I've really seen benefit me is really being willing to hold that long-term vision of what the business is for, but also, you know, what we're doing, who we're serving and just being willing to, to leave money on the table. I will also say this is something now at this stage in business that has been also just something I've had to revisit and edge I've had to work in terms of seeing opportunities to scale scale faster. Right? I, I, I could start cranking out courses and group programs and there's nothing wrong with group programs and courses. I have plenty of clients who sell those and I have plenty of friends who sell those successfully and they are wonderful programs and I don't believe it is in currently today, I might change my mind three months from now or five years from now, but I don't currently believe that is the way I can best show up and support clients in the way my zone of genius is best able to, to create results for people and just what I believe in terms of the type of work I do best facilitates results and also just what I like. But it also means leaving money on the table in that way in terms of like, there's so many opportunities to scale. I know that's so annoying to hear. I know I know. seven years ago, Kim would have would have been annoyed at that. But the, the truth is there's so many ways to make money the more you grow in business and, and being willing to say no to those things so you can say yes to the few things is also, I believe, how you long-term sustain and scale. Um, all right, hopefully that one makes sense. How are we doing on time here? I'm definitely feeling the nitro coffee, y'all. The nitro cold brew, I should say. Um, just, I have a spin class after this, and I think I will be I will be very grateful to spin some of this off. I don't know if I should order one of these ever again, but it was quite delightful. Okay, um, I've got so many here. I'm going to share this one because this is one that I think I cognitively knew at the start of my business, but I resisted and I think this has been an edge for me and also something I've gotten really good at and seeing how much this one has impacted my success and ability to sustain and make a million revenue in the past four years and what I know will also support me to continue to make money and that is learning to release money I and and I mean this in two ways I mean this literally in learning to spend money and I'll explain that, and learning to invest money. So I talk with clients about this quite a bit, and I'm, you've probably heard this in different ways, but I really believe, and I've had to work at this belief, this is not the belief set I 
grew up with. I very much grew up with the mindset and relationship with money of like, I'm the best saver in the world and that money is meant to be saved. And like, that's the responsible thing to do with money. We've done live streams on this. I won't go too far down the rabbit hole, but I definitely now have learned that money is an asset and it is meant to be circulated responsibly so but and and responsibly can mean different different things but that when we hoard money and hold on to money we stop the slow the flow and the circulation of money and literally like energetically the more we cling on to money the the less we allow to come through the door we sort of have to allow ourselves to release some money with intention and joy not just like spending money because Kim said so, and that's going to have you manifest money with with intentionality, but and the trust that there's always more where that comes from. And when you can learn to have that relationship with money, it is so much easier to have money circulate and more come through the door. And then on a very practical level, I'm sure I've shared Robert Kiyosaki's quote, which is saving is for losers. Savings is important. I have lots of savings. We have business savings. We have personal savings. I believe in savings. And I do also believe that at a certain level and know that at a certain level of savings after that, you really start to diminish your capacity for growth. Your money can't work for you. Your money can't compound for you. You can't leverage your money. It stagnates. It can't even keep up with inflation, particularly today. Again, this is a conversation for a whole nother live stream. But this has been, I'd say, one of my biggest lessons over the the last seven years is having a new relationship with money and really starting to learn to be okay with spending money and circulating money. And that means not not just in my business, but the beautiful painting we bought. It It was such a lesson for me to release that much money on something that feels not responsible and that isn't investing into, because I invest heavily already, that isn't even investing in my money to make me more money, that is more of a it's call it more of a liability than it is an asset. Um, but really learning to release money in that way has has been so important for me as a learning lesson on the money mindset side of things. But then also on the business side of things, really seeing how that is, um, tangential is the wrong word, the, the congruency there and seeing that it, it really is, I, I don't know any businesses at my level or higher that aren't investing back into their business. It really does take money to make money. And when you're not investing appropriately into your business and into yourself, um, it's sort of like saving is for losers, the Robert Kiyosaki quote. Yes, you will hoard and hold on to your money, but it, you cap it. It, it. it can't keep up with inflation, right? And so what I've really learned in business is the importance of continuing to reinvest back into business and back into myself. Now, personally, I invest very heavily into my own coaching, and I that is me walking my talk. I also find it, I mean... I think it's just really fucking valuable and I don't think I'd be here today without that support, but also back into my team and back into certain educational pieces that I need and different things that different, we're building dashboards in my business right now, right? There's just different things I'm investing in, into my business at all times because I know that is how we keep money circulating. That's also what allows this business to continue to grow and scale as well as sustain. Um, and, and being willing to make educated guesses and risks with those investments, knowing that not every investment pays off and letting that be okay. Just like when I invest in the stock market, not every investment in the stock market is a winner, but I have to continually invest to have those winners. And I think the same is true in business. And and that doesn't mean that, like, I, I think what happens and what I see a lot is a lot of businesses get stagnated because there's so much concern about making the wrong investment, the wrong choice. And I'm not suggesting people go throw their money away or not respect their money. I'm such a good steward to my money and so respectful of my money. But there can be so much time and your time is very valuable in money. And there is an oppor- a lost opportunity cost the more you sit on a decision in business. And so much time can be spent and wasted overthinking and trying to find the rest best decision and best investment and t- and while you're sitting on that you're losing out on the opportunity to figure out if that's the right investment or not or move on to the next one and and or to get the return for that investment and so that has just been a really big learning curve for me again because this is not how I'm naturally wired but just seeing the kind of like the faster you can make a decision trust yourself make an investment if it's right great lean into it if it's not right great cut your losses move on to the next thing instead of I think a lot of us want to freeze up and seeing that as just a part of business and money has served me exponentially I have absolutely made investments that 
haven't paid off and whether that's me or the other like it's it's almost irrelevant i think just seeing like that that's the same with the stock market like that's just a normal thing but those investments overall across the board being able to release money overall across the board is what has helped my income and my relationship with money to continue to grow and scale and i've also seen when i've not done that how it's like tightened up or like um gotten um more restricted and then the flip side of this i would i would offer and just see if we have comments we have comments the flip side of this that i would offer that i speak with clients about as well is i i want to be mindful with this because i do think there's a narrative in the manifesting space and i think sometimes in our space where this concept can then be blown out of proportion to mean spend all of your money to make money or like if you trusted your business and yourself you'd invest all of your money or you'd get super leverage and that is not at all what i'm talking about and i think really understanding that difference because i do think there are unfortunately because some of those messages a lot of people who are over leveraged or over investing in a way that doesn't serve their profit margin or doesn't serve their long-term financial freedom and success and wealth. So I think just under and this is like a com- I'm not a financial advisor or planner, so don't hear any of any of this as advice. But I would say these are just lessons I've learned both to practice making those being a little bit more I say educated risk risk in air quotes, but allowing myself to make those investments and release money, but also really understanding like what that line is and caring about things like a profit margin and also caring about investing my money outside of my business as well into vehicles that allow me to build wealth that isn't all required on my business. Um, and again, this is, I did a Instagram industry chat with someone who, who is, this is their, their zone of genius and expertise. This is not my zone of genius and expertise, but it is a lesson learned. So again, do not take this as financial advice, but these are things that have been really valuable for me and supporting me quite a lot in business. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. I'm just rolling through this because I'm going to, I'm going to stand for 15 more minutes. And I just want to see what I want to ch- chat about, chat about. I always want to say chat because I have a lot and I wanted to promise, I promise I would share my five-year plan of full circle moment. Okay. I'm going to share one last, one last lesson because I want to share a little on the mindset side that has been, uh, and just what I've been working, I would say the last probably two years in business that has been really valuable for me. And I hope it will be valuable for someone to hear. And I think this is not necessarily what I would have thought at the start of business. I really would have thought, I don't know, I don't know what I would have thought would be the edge or the thing I'm working on, but these are probably the two pieces that have, and that I continue to work at every stage and level, but that have been present for me. And that is really working my energetic boundaries, which I'll explain what I mean by that. And also really working, um, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this, but in, in a way that makes sense, being less concerned with the being light and being nice and more concerned with being, of of course I want to be nice, but being more concerned with being honest and doing work that matters and doing work that I feel is valuable because they're not always, they don't always fit in the same room together. Those have been just, I would say edges I've worked at every stage, but particularly the energetic boundaries I find as as you create more success, as you're holding more clients, as you're holding more money, as you're holding more team members, as you're holding more people in your audience, there just tend to be more people who want something from you, more people who want attention, more people, like there's just more to hold a boundary around. And I think I'm pretty darn good at holding practical, physical boundaries. Imagine most of my clients would say that. Imagine most people knowing know, who know me would say that. I don't think that's always been the case. I, I would bet in my LA days, I wonder if I would have said I had great boundaries then. I probably had okay boundaries, but I think I've really honed in on and worked through because boundaries are so layered, right? The reasons we have challenges, holding boundaries, practical, physical boundaries, have so many mindset layers. And so I think I've done so much work around that where I think those are, there's always room for growth and improvement for all of us, but I think those are pretty rock solid. But what I've really been working on, I'd say the last couple of years are more the energetic boundaries. And by that, I mean, what I allow myself to take on, even if I like have a physical boundary up or a practical boundary up in in terms of um, how someone can contact me or 
you know, what I will or will not give away for free or take on. But there's, I think, an energetic component of even if you're practically doing something, what you allow yourself to take on or what you allow yourself to absorb or what you allow your brain to ruminate on or who you allow yourself to spend time with or who, um, I, I think this this makes sense energetically. Um, so, and I, that has just been a piece that I have found as a CEO, as a business owner, as someone who's holding a lot of people, just a really important um, edge to work. I think I think it's just an ongoing edge, especially for those of us who are in caring fields and who care about people and just learning how to continue to strengthen that energetic boundary. I think I've gotten really good at things like I love my clients so so dearly. Like I, I, I truly love my clients and... I also know me taking on their stuff is not helpful to them and it's not helpful to me and it doesn't help me to best serve them. And I think I've really gotten to a place where I've gotten so great at lovingly holding them in the container and supporting them with their stuff. But I, I hold, I have 23 to 25 clients at a time and at any given time, people can be going through a lot of stuff and I work with clients long term. So yes, it's business, but it's also mindset and there can be a lot that can come in. If I didn't have energetic boundaries, even if I had practical boundaries in terms of when the call is done or how much I'm supporting on base camp, I would just take on so much. And we've talked about this probably the somewhere maybe on the podcast, the difference between caring and carrying. And I think I've just really worked on learning how to care without caring, without taking on, with having that energetic boundary of I'm going to hold this space without taking it on and then leave it with all the love in the world, I love my clients so much, but it's just, it, it's not useful for anyone if I'm taking that on. So I'd say that energetic boundary has been probably um, one of the biggest gifts I've given myself and just biggest like edges to con- just to continue to strengthen that I think I've gotten really great at. And I just think there's there's always an opportunity there for most of us. And then similarly, I do think this is a piece of the energetic boundary part, but one of like we've all got stuff right my one of my things is i don't ever want people to feel misunderstood i don't ever want to make someone feel badly i i care deeply about people it's why i think i'm good at my job and i would say like yes i want to be liked but i think there's almost like a, a component under that of i just don't want someone to ever feel badly on my because i've done something un, to unintentionally harm someone i have it's, i think it's why i'm always like does this make sense i'm always wanting to be heard and understood in a way because i want to make sure that I'm giving context and I'm taking care of people. And there's so many layers there. And this has been a big edge I've worked because while there's a great component to that, that can also be a component that can get into murky enmeshed waters and that can also um, not have that energetic boundary we were talking about. I think can also, as you're growing in business and holding more people and really wanting to focus on doing work that matters and also having the kind of boundaries and putting out the kinds of things that can be confront. I mean, coaching itself, I was talking about this yesterday on the live stream with Elise, coaching just is confronting when you are speaking your truth to clients. And so I would say this is just an edge. Again, I think I've I've worked really well, but it's just something at every, I think every time we up level, we are confronted with our upper limits and kind of, what is it, new devil, I think it's new devil, same devil, not new level, new devil. I think these are just some of the edges at every stage. I just have to rework and I share this, hopefully this is helpful for someone to hear where it's like, oh, like this is an ongoing journey and process, but also for some of you who maybe resonate with some of these just to see like, oh, like, it you can be a caring human without taking everything on those energetic i would say those energetic boundaries and per- learning how to protect your energy and learning how to um yeah protect your energy um and to to have clean energy is maybe like i always talk about coming into coaching calls i really do my work to come in clean meaning i also don't bring in my stuff um, but that also means I want to leave a coaching call clean where I don't take on someone's stuff. Having those really clean energetic boundaries, I think is game changing if you're a coach, especially if you're wanting to hold more and more clients. There's no way I could hold 23 to 25 clients if I was bringing my stuff in or taking their stuff on. Um, and then the other piece, cause I don't think I shared the, the lesson there, but, um, so protecting your energy and protecting your time, I think. It always important and the more humans you're holding in any capacity and the more the more success you have the more this becomes such an important part because if you're not protecting your time and your energy even if you're not coaching clients one-on-one 
you're the CEO, you can't have your creative thinking time, you can't be a visionary, you can't strategically think, you can't you can't run a business if you are if you don't have practical and energetic boundaries around that. And then on the wanting to be so caring and not have people feel bad, that part of it, I, I would just to be frank, that is that is just an edge for me at every level. I I've just really had to work at being okay with knowing not everyone's going to like me. People might misunderstand what I say. I might put out content that comes from a good place that I want to have serve and help someone that someone might misread or that might trigger someone or that because it's one post and I'm already long-winded enough, right? We can't write a whole novel that might miss a piece there that someone doesn't get the context for or that makes someone feel badly, right? Like those are just things that are going to happen. And I've really just had to work those edges and learn that that is just the, like, those are just parts of the trade-offs of if I want to be more visible, if I do want to put out stuff that for everybody, for every person that that might rub the wrong way, it could help 10 people. And I, I just want to normalize that because it's not like I'm immune to that. It's not like where I'm like, yes, someone is going to misread this post and be bothered by it. And I feel great about that. That still bothers me. I've just really had to work that edge and really start to get clear on what's more important to me. Is it being completely understood by every person or is it being the best to my ability, true to myself, true to my work, true to my voice, putting out work that I think matters, doing the work that matters to me, being honest, being truthful. Um, and I've, I've just had to really decide and get really clear on which is more important to me and being okay with the discomfort that can come from having to sometimes sit with what that can mean when you're showing up consistently and in, in that way. Okay. You all are very quiet, so hopefully that resonates and makes sense. But if you have now we're on the replay questions around that, feel free to share. I hope that is helpful. Okay, so I wanted to close because I had said got a couple more minutes here, and then I'm going to spin class. I wanted to share my five-year plan. I promised that in the email. What my kind of revenue projections are for the seven-year celebration and the full circle moment I'm having. And this this will be this will be pretty quick. So five year plan. That was a little bit of a, a tease that I'm putting because I basically don't believe believe in that. I think so much time is wasted in business making the five year plan and the ten year plan. When what I have found to be true of COVID taught us nothing else is how important it is. Yeah, planning is essential. Having a plan is essential. Having systems and processes is essential. Understanding your marketing, your sales goals, kind of what you're focused on. I'm very clear on you know, what we're doing 90 days, 180 days, even maybe a year ahead. And just how important it is to also be adaptable and just how much information and data we're getting from my own business, but also what's going on in the world where things need to change. So Personally, I don't make a five-year plan. I don't think I ever have in my business. There's no way five years ago I knew that this is what my business would look like today. I have no idea what my business is going to look like in five years. I imagine in some ways it could look exactly the same and just be a more scaled version of one-on-one. -on -one. I also give myself complete permission to change things dramatically. And, you know, who knows? Maybe I will be selling courses or something like that. But I have zero five-year plan. Um, now the what i would say and i was talking to my husband about this if there was something that was really important to me that i was clear that i wanted to execute on let's say i wanted to write a novel and i thought that was going to take five years to write and to get published i don't know that it would take that long but let's just say that were the case absolutely then i would have a five-year vision and put goals and plans like loosely around that and you know show up for that but that isn't what's going on in my business right now. So my five-year plan is more continue to show up and do good work and serve my clients really well and to keep showing up and delivering value and building my audience and just getting better and better at what I'm doing from a coach perspective in terms of mastering my craft because I think I am on a forever learning journey to continue to grow as a human outside of business because I think the more we grow as humans outside of business and the less myopic we are with just one thing, the more that serves everything. I saw this when I was acting. The more obsessed I was with acting and the more I only studied acting, the kind of like the worst of an actor I was. The more I lived my life and also learned things and was a full-fledged human and grew in different ways, the more my craft as an actor grew. And I think the same is true for us as business owners, particularly as a coach. So I would say that's more the way I think about my five-year five plan. Um, 
and and continuing to refine messaging, marketing, sales, because I think that also is an ongoing, ever going journey and role as a CEO. So that's more the way I think about my five year plan, if that's helpful to hear. Revenue wise, I have every intention of us scaling to a million in revenue from one on one in the next five years. And I have zero pressure around that. I really hold that with both a full intention that that is not only possible, but will happen. And also am with like such conviction of like, yes, I want that. And that is happening. And also with so little pressure of, and and if my revenue never changes, I'm making more than enough money and I'm, I'm good. And it's sort of like that bothness, but I, I do very much have that revenue goal intention and very much see us on, on track for that. And I share that because I think otherwise someone could hear this. And I, I think there's this way sometimes when we're, and no one else has to think this way, but I, I do think continuing to grow, even if it's just to see like what's possible and uh, like what else is like, is that, can we do this in our business? I think is, it's just part of being a human and growth. And I, I, what actually lights me up and gives me happiness, not so much like the more money in my bank account, but the stretching and the growth that comes from that, um, in flow, I always say his name incorrectly, Milhai, oh, this is always embarrassing because I need, I need to learn how to say his name. But they talk a little bit about how, um, and there's my husband, and I were just reading an article about this. There's a, there's a foreign term for this as well. But, but essentially, I really believe that happiness is derived when you have a, from grit, when you have a goal and something that you have passion and perseverance for that long-term goal, and you show up in something that feels like a little bit of a, like the right kind of challenge that feels stretchy, and then you're on the other side of it and you see that you've created it. I think that's where so many of us as humans, we don't want to admit it we don't realize it but that's where we get the most happiness it's not so it's it's the journey right not that end goal but it's the journey that gives us that happiness i love spin class because it's kind of hard but it's so much fun for that and it feels that that process feels so good and so that's with the monetary goals i think having those goals i'm, I'm both i'm so locked in and so driven for that because i think the process whether or not we reach it or not is it's almost like that's irrelevant but the process of it just feels so so fun and so fulfilling and so joyful and personally what lights my brain up and i will not be mad if we have the money in the bank account either um so that's five-year plan and the um the revenue goals and projections and then the full circle moment i'm having this is what i was going to close with and this is more just me sharing this as a fun fun thing with y'all but also something i hope someone will hear and see this is me seven years in and i'm having this moment in business where i'm first having a full circle moment but also feeling like i've both been doing this for seven years and i joke that i'm a dinosaur in the online space and you know marketing and sales like these are things i've been doing for decades and i also feel like i'm such a baby in business and i'm just getting started and that feels so good to me in in this way of and not a baby in business maybe that's the wrong way to phrase it because i do think i'm Again, a dinosaur in many ways, and I very much know what I'm doing. I'm great at what I do, but I just see how much opportunity there is for me to grow and learn in in all of these arenas, and that is so exciting to me. And it feels very exciting to be in this place where we are sustainable, we are making great money. I think I'm doing great work, but to see how much potential there is, and to almost feel like, wow, we're just getting started. And I share that because I, I hope for wherever you're at in business, I think sometimes we think that you're going to get bored with business or seven years in, you'll be like, oh, like what else is there? And I, hopefully you'll hear this as like, it, it, I think it just gets more and more exciting in that way. And I'm having a full circle moment in that what I was sharing earlier, I spent the beginning years of business feeling like I, I love the acting and entertainment world, but feeling like they were so, it was so separate from my coaching life and that there was it, it was something and of course i'm like proud of that but like there was really nothing congruent to the coaching or to the business side of things and that not not that i was yeah that it just didn't make sense to talk about and recently i've really been noticing how much they are intertwined how much the entertainment industry how much my experience literally i think i was running a small business as an actor and my time in the advertising world and even working in a high-end cocktail bar for 10 years how much that translates to business how much that translates to 
not just marketing and sales, but also the creative thinking that I think is really required for us as a CEO, how much it translates to what we were talking about earlier with the identity piece of defining and owning that role and continuing to to build that character and to expand that role as a CEO, how much overlap there is. And I recently reread, um, what's it called, Blue Ocean Strategy, and I'm reading for the first time the Medici Effect. I don't know if anyone's read that, but the Medici Effect talks a lot about um, the intersection of different disciplines or different industries and that that's where innovation comes from. And so I think I'm sitting in this place in my business. I'm sure you've noticed my content. We've been talking more about my acting experience or the waiting tables or cocktail bar experience or my experience in the advertising world. And it's so intentional because I'm really seeing that Medici effect. I'm seeing that blue ocean effect. I'm seeing how this is a part of my unique edge, a part of my zone of genius, a part of the way I see business in a slightly different way than I think other people now there are other are other actresses who have started business but i also have a degree in psychology like i think just my unique intersections give me a very different lens and give me a very different skill set particularly with tapping into and helping clients tap into their messaging and their creative thinking and really i'm really really good at that for clients and helping them with their content and their marketing and i'm just getting to see that in a new way that i think i didn't either notice or give myself permission for until recently so this is something i'm personally excited with because it's giving me so much life because i'm getting to revisit this part of my world that was such a big part of who i am and a skill set that's very unique to me that is also i think a part of what makes me a unique coach and really great at what i do but it also feels in some ways i'm doing the same exact strategy but really fun and fresh and i've just been reinvigorated with content and with writing content and so i share that because a i'm just excited about but i hope for someone listening just seeing like these are the fun things about business that in many ways this feels like i'm almost having a full circle moment because these are the things i probably talked about my first year in business and the thought i wasn't supposed to or some of the things i've had to unlearn but also that way in which it's, it's so neat how we, this is a journey and we get to keep rediscovering, but also discovering new elements to bring in. And in that way, I think it's, um, I don't know, I think, I think in that way, business is very fun and that's something I'm celebrating and just fun to share with you as well. But it also is just having me tap back into the, I don't know, I don't know that I would call myself an artist, but I think of myself as someone who's creative minded. And I say so often that I think of business owners, if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, I really believe you are a creative because we are creating something out of nothing. And I do think that your ability to, I think everyone has has creativity and everyone has the ability to think creatively. But I don't think everyone has been given the time, the space, the energy, the skills to hone their creative thinking, to pull out their creative thinking, to leverage their creative thinking. And I'm just having this moment where I'm like, wait, I I love this part of myself and this way of interacting with the world. Like, this is who I am. And also, this is something I love to pull out of my clients. So that is the full circle moment. But also, this is giving me, I don't know, giving me, giving me, I've always loved my business, but it's giving me a new life. So that was the part I was going to share with you all as a closing thought. So in summary, seven years in business, celebrating the heck out of it. But as you notice, I barely talked about celebrating the money. I'm celebrating the lessons. I'm celebrating the miles, the, the harder moments that I've had to learn and grow through. I'm celebrating the the learning curves and edges i'm celebrating the things that i'm excited as challenges to move forward in so i hope if you're listening to this this is maybe giving you something that you're like oh i'm so glad to hear this like this is normalizing or this is i know some of these are things i wish i had known when i started my business but i also hope this might help everyone see yes i love money i want you to make money i want me to make money there's that is part of the goal in business, of course, and the profitability piece. And I think all of these, um, more of the process goals and the growth edges, I think these are the these are what allow you to actually make more money. These are the lessons learned and unlearned that have allowed me to make reoccurring multi-five figure months for years at this point, to say fully booked, I've been fully booked for four and a half or five years at this point. Um, these are, I think, the things that matter the most and the money gets to be the icing on the cake. So I hope this was valuable for you. Again, if you're watching on the replay, if you have questions, reflections, throw them at me. And if this is something you're listening to, I always forget this, but we, if you're listening to this and you're like, you know what, I am jamming on this. And some of these are things that I know I could use support with. I'm hearing him talk about whether it's a strategy piece of thing or unlearning so much of what I help my clients with is unlearning the noise from the online space and 
really my job as a coach is not to tell you how I did things or the strategy that's worked for me, but to help you find the strategy that worked for you, to help you pull out your answers, to help you see your version of success, to help you see the noise that's coming up to create those energetic boundaries and real practical boundaries and to show up in a way where you're really clear on that identity, that role piece as a CEO and to show up in that way to run your business. Or if you're hearing me talk about the creative thinking part and that unique edge part when it comes to your messaging and your content, your marketing, like I could really use some help with that in my business. I'm ready to make 10K months. I'm ready to make 20K months. I'm ready to blow the fuck up and make 100K months. That is what I support my clients with. That's how I approach business. That's how I approach coaching. I feel like this was probably a good good insight into how I think about business and my coaching as well. I would love to connect with you. I do tend to be fully booked, but we always have spots that are opening up as clients are finishing. And sometimes I open up spots for intensives. In April, we definitely have intensives that we're opening up. We might have a one-on-one spot opening up, but we definitely have an intensive spot opening up. So I will drop a link for a discovery call if that's something you're interested in. I would love to connect with you. It would be an honor to support you. Clearly, I love this work. And then everyone who is here now and on the replay, thank you as well for celebrating seven years in business because this group is a big part of my business. So thank you for being a part of my journey. I'm so grateful that I get to have these conversations with you every week. And it is literally a part of of like my happy happy space and place so i'm grateful for for all of you and for being a part of the journey and i'll be back next week and we'll have another live stream topic for y'all bye